is a pro controller and they're different from the average controller. For example, a pro controller has subtle features added like extra buttons called paddles at the back, trigger stops which stop your trigger quicker resulting in a quicker reaction time, and raised analog sticks which help with precision. At a glance, you probably wouldn't even see those things, but the easiest way to tell the difference between a regular controller and a pro controller is the price. Most pro controllers easily cost more than two times the price of a regular or stock controller, which results in the majority of people instantly losing interest and voluntarily ruining their future by holding their controllers in a But what if I just got my hands on the best pro controller for the lowest price? After seeing multiple comments upon endlessly trying to find better pro controllers. I finally did some research and I found out that this controller is not only the best selling Xbox controller, but is also the cheapest controller. Tolling in at $10 less than an original stock Xbox controller with pro level features. This sounded way too good to be true. So I also looked at what everyone else was saying. Cheap AF. I mean, he's right. That's literally why the controller is so popular. So why did he rate it one star? And where's the rest of the review? Definitely lives up to the hype. The underside paddles are a game changer. Complete bang for your buck. It was great uh, until it broke. Well, that's what happens when something breaks. It kind of just stops working. Anyways, I decided to test this controller for myself to see how well it compares to all my other pro controllers at less than a quarter of the cost. Out of the box, well, actually at first I was having a lot of trouble opening. It's like they were trying to hide something from me. Just kidding. I got my box opener and finally got through the plastic and it was packaged nicely. There are a lot of features that make this controller stand out, including the back two paddles, the hall effect joysticks, which we'll talk about in another video, but they basically put an end to involuntary stick drift. And there was even a software to set up, update and configure your controller, which some $200 controllers still don't have. <coughs> Stop. Sorry, I'm a little sick. Anyways, for less than $50, you don't get the travel case and all the accessories that come with the pricier controllers. But if you really sit down and think about it, when do you ever travel with your controller? I'm totally fine with what was included, which was just the controller, the cable, the instruction, and the free months of Xbox Game Pass that someone who subscribed with post notifications on got too early. Enjoy. But honestly, my first physical impressions of the controller were solid and I had no complaints. It felt great in my hand. Maybe it was a little smaller than the controllers I normally use, but that's pretty much how Xbox controllers are made. And it didn't feel abnormal or uncomfortable. The paddles were also placed nicely and all the buttons had a nice membrane feel, which is basically the opposite of mechanical. You can hear it better than I can explain it. And I don't want to confuse anyone, but it's a satisfying feel. And I personally like both the same on a controller. Like I said earlier, everything was looking pretty decent. It didn't seem like anything was missing. But then I started thinking about my other controllers. The only thing that I could think of that was missing was the trigger stops. I always use at least trigger stops, if not hair triggers, on all of my controllers. I haven't played without them in at least five years, so I don't know if this would change my gameplay or opinion about this controller. So I started my computer to launch Fortnite, download the Nexus software, and test everything. But it just happened to be the brand new season and the servers were offline for the whole day. After finally updating Fortnite, plugging in my controller and finding the Nexus app to download, the reviews were mostly either five stars or one star. And I'm not gonna lie, when I was reading them, there were a lot of reviews warning you that it made the controller unusable. But I wanted to use the controller at its full potential, so I went ahead and downloaded the software anyway. When I opened the app, just kidding again. When I opened the app and updated it, it was actually a great app. It looked visually better than all the other apps I've used, and it was very simple to operate. You can customize three different profiles, and in each profile, you can play around with the binds, dead zone, which I love default because I usually make in-game change triggers and vibrations. I always turn off vibration when I'm playing FPS games or games that I want to have a competitive advantage in. But here's something interesting I found while customizing the triggers. You can actually turn on an option to enable 
hair triggers, making the trigger activate as early as possible without fully actuating or pressing the trigger all the way down. I've never seen a controller without trigger stops have this option. And I was curious to see if it made up for not having any physical trigger stops at all. So I loaded into Fortnite to put this controller to test and practice for a bit, and it wasn't too bad. Now, I'm a little rusty because I haven't hey. played in a few months, but the controller felt normal, which is good. It felt a little sticky at times. That's the only way I can describe it. So after a few minutes, I decided to test a lower dead zone and I surprisingly got away with playing on the lowest dead zone without any drift. Now that is surprising. I haven't practiced in a super long time, so I kind of just took my time getting a feel for the controller and unwashing myself. I did notice the digital hair trigger setting from the Nexus app making a difference, but it didn't stop me from fully pressing the triggers anyway, and I felt my pointer fingers getting tired, so that is something I thought I would point out. After building for a while, next I loaded into an edit course. Also, in the process of testing the controller, I found another thing missing, which is the usual raised analog stick that all pro controllers usually have. That is definitely something that I would like to be included in a controller I play with regularly because it makes a huge difference on how accurately you aim or edit if you play Fortnite. But it's not such a big deal because you can fix this by buying analog stick attachments that snap on, which essentially do the same thing. And let me make this clear, for less than $50, it's really hard to complain about this controller. But since it is a new season, it's time once again to test this controller in the competitive Fortnite mode to see what rank this controller can give me. I saw there were some new POIs and since no one really knows what they're doing at the new drop spots, I decided to hot drop for some easy kills off spawn. I think I picked up the worst gun in the game, but I managed to get two kills instantly. I made an impulse play and got another kill and I could finally pick up what I'm used to, a pump and an SMG. Anyways, it was time to clean up the rest of the lobby and I was having no problems working the new controller. Hey. For my honest review, I would give it an 8 out of 10. Although there is a few things that could be improved upon, I would recommend it as like the training wheels towards learning how paddles work and a great starting point if you're actually interested in pro controllers. There's a link in the description if you wanna buy the controller. I've never personally recommended for anyone to buy a specific controller. And if you don't have this controller, but you want to try paddles, then you are 100% missing out. You can thank me later, but I'm just glad to call this my job. All right, well, thanks for watching guys. I have another job I have to go to, so I'll see you guys in the next video.